All right, let's get started, everybody. Feet together, right fist, left palm, show courtesy. So we're gonna start off today with our standing meditation. Now for you guys, if you wanna put like some soft, relaxing music in the background, that's perfectly fine to help you get into that meditative state. So today we're gonna do our meditation. You're gonna put your hands up, kind of like you're hugging a tree, and you wanna try and feel the heat exchange in between the hands. Imagine like a circle of energy going around the hands and focus on the breathing, keeping your eyes a little bit open. Now we're gonna move on to our Qigong, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Just follow along as best you can. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Breathing in and out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Now try and squat down low in the last position. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. And the closing, breathe in. And out. Very good. Next stretch up. Down. Up. Down. Right side.
switch. Switch. And switch. Neck rotations. Other way. Hands up. Clenching the fist, stretch the fingers out and clench tightly. Circle the wrist in. Out. Shoulder rotation forward. Back. Very good, and slapping the kidneys. Remember, you're gonna turn with your waist and your hands are gonna be relaxed, hitting the side. Chest, up top and up back. Center, right below the belly button and the tailbone. Hip rotations. Other way. And separate your feet, grab the ball waist turning, inhale as you go up, exhale as you go down, try to keep your eyes focused on the imaginary ball. Breathing in. And out. Squat down low. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Other way.
breathing in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Last one, breathe in. And out. Feet together. Knee rotations. Other direction. And shake it out. Slapping the left side stimulates the meridians and the acupuncture points. Right side. Legs. Lower back. Feel free to lean forward a little bit. It makes it easier. And the stomach washing. So remember with the stomach washing, your both hands are going to press into your stomach. And you're going to push your fingers out by tensing the muscles in your abdomen. So you push in and then tense up to push the fingers out. You're gonna be going in a circle to your left. And the circle goes way underneath the belly button and around. Top of the head is to stimulate the pressure points on the top of the head. Feeding up the hands, massage the face, forehead. You're gonna use your index finger and middle finger and go in a circle around the forehead. Smooth out those wrinkles and massaging the pressure points. Eyes going down with the palms and massaging the side of the head. Nose going down the frown line. Mouth using the ridge of the hand going around the lip line.
neck. Using both hands. Thyroid gland. So for this one, this one's a little weird, but the way it works is you're gonna clack your teeth and tighten the muscles in your neck. So that's gonna stimulate the thyroid gland. You're gonna keep your hands down low and you wanna keep the knees buckled as with everything that we do. And next one is for the kidneys. Now for this one, the hands are gonna be this way, the index finger on top of the middle finger, doing this onto the base of your skull. This way, you're gonna cover your ears completely with both palms and tap the base of your skull with these two fingers. It, you should hear like a drum beat if your ear is completely covered. And shake it out. Now we move on to the eight brocades Qigong. The first one holding up the sky for respiration, digestion, and elimination. Keep the hands interlaced. And breathing in through the nose. And out through the mouth. And rising up, breathe in through the nose. And out through the mouth. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in, and out, breathe in, and out. Now number two, pulling the bow and shooting the arrow. So for this one, remember to follow the index finger as you go out and in and switch sides. On this one, we're gonna rise and sink in the stance. If you do wanna challenge yourself, try to just sit in the horse stance. Your feet are pointed forward, the knees are pushed out, and your feet are about double shoulder width apart. So sometimes we'll do it and we'll just hold it but if you have knee issues, it's best if you just rise and sink to mitigate the amount of pressure you're putting on your knees. Breathe in. And out. 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 Last one, breathe in. 
and out. And the closing, breathe it in. And out. And shake it out. Now we're gonna stretch in between two exercises. So grab the foot and stretch it up. If you wanna do this on a chair, sit on the chair and do the same thing. And stretch, try to get your heel close to your belly button. And switch sides. All right, if you want to use a chair or a wall to hold your balance, that's perfectly fine. And shake it out. Now let's move on to exercise number three, pressing up and down for the stomach and the spleen. So remember for this one, what's turning is your waist. And the arms are just moving up and down. And the waist is what's turning. Breathing in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in, and out, breathe in, and out, last one, breathe in, And out. And the closing, breathe in. And out. Number four, looking back. So as we do this one, when you look back, you want to open your eyes wide, and then when you come back forward, you relax them. Ready, breathe in, and out. Breathe in, and out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Last one, breathe in. And out. Now the closing, breathe in. And out. Now we're gonna isolate some of the stance work that's used in Tai Chi. So we're gonna hold the horse stance for about 10 seconds. And hold, 10, nine, eight, seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Now we're going to step out to our left side and hold the front stance. Try to keep the back leg locked and this leg bent. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And back to the horse stance. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And switch right side. Ten, nine. Remember, keep this leg locked. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And shake it out. Now let's move on to exercise number five, wagging the tail. So for this one, remember, you're going to breathe in for one full circle, breathe out for the next circle. Keeping the hands inverted at the top of the knees. Breathing in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Out. Last one. Breathe in. And out. And relax. Let's move on to number six, jolting back. So with this one, remember when you lean back, try not to put your head back. A lot of times people do that and then they end up getting lightheaded. Same story with this, don't like fall. <laughs> try to keep this direct posture as you go down and as you come up. Breathing in and out as you go down. Breathing in. Then once you're straight, you're gonna breathe out as you lean back. Then breathe in as you straighten up and breathe out as you stretch down. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. And the closing, breathe in. And out. Awesome job. Now find a place to stretch and pull your foot back. Now with this one, remember, you want to try and keep your pelvis forward. A lot of times people will either lean back, which contorts the stretch. Try to keep your pelvis forward and try not to let your foot go out. Keep it like thighs touching together. And if you need to hold onto a wall or grab onto a chair, that's perfectly fine. And switch sides.
and shake it out. Last two exercises of the eight brocades. Number seven, staring at the fist with angry eyes. So remember with this one, when you go out, you squeeze the muscles a little bit in the arms and open the eyes wide as you stare at the fist and relax them as you draw back to center. Breathing in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Last one. Breathe in and out. The closing, breathe in and out. And last one, rising up with the heels to bring the energy to the crown. So for this one, remember, when you go back down, you wanna feel a little bit of a jolt. Now, if you have a little bit of trouble holding your balance, you don't have to stretch up all the way. Just go up a little bit, and down to where you can consciously control it. And feet are a little bit closer than usual. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in and out. Very good. Now we move on to our seated meditation. If you want to, you can sit on the floor, which is what I prefer. But if not, you can definitely sit on a chair, which is a lot more comfortable for a lot of people. When we do this, I'm going to count out the number of seconds we're going to be breathing for. So when we breathe in, we're going to breathe in for four seconds. Then when we, we're going to hold it for two and breathe out for four seconds and then hold for two. The hands for women, it's going to be right hand on top of the left. For men, it's, excuse me, for women, it's left on right. For men, it's right on left. And try to keep your back straight, eyes closed, and breathe in. Two, three, four, hold. Two, breathe out. Two, three, four, hold. Two, breathe in. Two, three, four, hold. Two, out. Two, three, four, hold. Two, breathe in. Two, three, four, three, hold, two, breathe out, two, three, four, hold, two, breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, out, two, three, four, hold, two, breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, breathe out, Two, three, four. And now try to keep that same breath going, but inside your own head. Try to mitigate the number of thoughts to the one thought of just to breathe.
and open your eyes and shake it out, stand up. All right. So I tried to get through that part faster by stretching intermittently. That way we can focus more on the Tai Chi, the form itself rather. So I'm going to start with us going over the walking and then I want to start the form, the 24 postures. So very quickly, we're going to go over the walking for the grabbing the ball and brushing the horse's mane. So the starting posture with the toe up. Now, you're going to shift the weight forward. Shift back. Now you're going to turn out. Shift the weight forward. Now, once the weight is completely off the back leg, you step. Now, shift forward again. Shift back. And you're going to turn out. Shift forward and step. Now, going the other way. Shift forward. Shift back. Turn. Shift forward. Step. Shift forward. Shift back. Turn out, shift forward, and step. Now, keep in mind, everything moves together. So when we're stepping, it's not I turn the foot, then I turn my waist, then I shift forward. Those three things have to happen at the same time. So while my foot is turning, my chest is turning, and the weight is shifting. Now when I step and I shift forward, same story. It's not this happens first, then this. It all happens together. Everything at the same time. So everything should reach the end point by the time you're done. It's by the time you're at the end of your stance, your waist shouldn't keep turning. Same thing when we incorporate the hands. If my stance is already here, my hands should not be moving. I should have already been at the end point. So with that said, let's start with the stance. This time, it's this almost the same stance as this, but instead of toe up, toe down. That's just to start, and then you go right here. And shifting forward, the hands are going to switch positions. The right hand comes up, the left hand goes down. Or the top hand goes down, the bottom hand goes up. And by the time I reach the end point, everything's in position. Then I shift back. Now as I turn, I grab the ball. Now I shift the weight forward. When I step, now I'm going to brush, raising the bottom hand, bringing down the top hand. Shifting back, turning, and grabbing the ball. Shifting forward, step, and brush. I can't really see how far I have to go. Okay, other way. So, grab the ball, put the foot down, and shift and brush. So keep in mind, the foot and the bottom hand should be opposites. So if it's this way, as in the bottom hand, it's the same as the leg, it needs to switch. Then shift back. Turn. Shift forward. Step. And shift. Grab the ball. Shift back. Turn. Then shift forward. Step. And brush. Now with regard to alignment. In the front stance, the leading finger 
and the back of this hand should all be in line with this toe, which it takes a very long time to be able to do that naturally, but just keep that in the back of your mind. This more or less should be the line. Now with grabbing the ball, the hand on top is about throat height. The hand on bottom is right below the belly button. So from here, when you shift forward, it's the shifting of the weight that brings the hands forward. You shouldn't consciously try to reach out because for the most part, you're just doing this. It's the shifting that's gonna put the hands in the proper position. And if it's done correctly, all you really have to do is turn the hands and there should already be in the proper position. Then as you turn, shift back, step forward and brush, same story. As you shift forward, the hands should arrive at the appropriate destination. Now, all of Tai Chi involves the breath work. So, as we continue, we're gonna focus on the breathing now that we've gone over the stepping in the hand. So from here, this is the inhale. Then you step out, brush, and exhale. Shifting back, grab the ball, inhale. Shifts forward. Step out, and exhale. Breathe in. And out. And other way. Now, I'm going to be breathing in through my nose and out through my mouth. Hopefully, it's more audible that way. For Tai Chi, as opposed to the Qigong, all the breathing is done through the nose. Breathing in. Step out and exhale. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Very good. Now, let's go over the other stepping that we covered last class, which is actually the easier stepping. So, where am I? Okay. For this one, we're gonna shift our weight to the outside leg so that the other leg is easy to pick up. And then we put the foot down and shift again. Now, once the weight has shifted to the other leg, you pick up the other foot, bring it in. So always the foot that's being put, picked up is the foot you're gonna shift your weight to. And then the opposite leg, pick up and put together. Shift, pick up, step out, shift, pick up, and step in. Now going the other way. So now this foot's gonna step out, shift. Now you're gonna pick out the other leg, pick up, put it down, and shift. Now keep in mind, it's not a normal standing position. You should be bent down quite a bit. Pick up, step out, and shift. Once you've shifted all the way, pick up, step in, and shift. Pick up, step out, shift. Pick up, step in, and stand up. Now the hands that are coordinated with that are a little bit difficult. A lot of people have trouble with this, so 
the hands that go with this is called wave hands like clouds. And the way it works is, so let's say I, this is how it looks. Now to simplify the action, the hands are literally just doing this. The complex part is coordinating that with the stepping and the turning of the waist. So let's say I'm starting on this end. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch the hands, turn the waist. Right, so essentially the elbows are in line. This hand is about head height, and this one is a little bit lower than the belly button. Now I'm gonna switch the hands and turn. Switch the hands, turn, switch, and turn. Now, standing, it's the same thing. If we're, we're just going to go over this in the standing position, next class, we'll incorporate the seven. So you're just going to switch and turn. Now I'm going to turn this into a little bit of a meditation. So what, try to keep your eyes focused on the center of your palm as you switch. Breathing in on one side and breathing out on the other side. And this will help get you used to this action so that when we coordinate it with the feet, it's a lot easier. So breathing in one way and breathing out the other way, keeping the eye focused on the center of the palm. Breathing in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. Out. And shake it out. Now, th that is actually a very good meditation. A while back, um, my teacher just pulled us out of class and was like, set the timer for 10 minutes, and was like, just do this. <laughs> and it really gets you focused. It gets you centered. So I like to do that. If I'm having a bad day, just do this for five minutes. It really helps me to stay centered. All right. Now, we've learned the parts. Now we put it together. So the first form that we learn is called the 24 postures and it's not 24 movements it's essentially 24 different techniques put together in varying ways so to start i don't know how your cameras are because sometimes the camera mirrors the image so as i explain it i'll tell you which side you're supposed to be going to and you can kind of feel it out from there so you start with your feet together hands on the side now Bend your knees, and you're going to step out with the left leg and shift to center. Now, draw the hands forward, rise up with the hands. Now you're going to bend at the elbows, the wrists, and then bring the hands back down by the waist. Now turn to your right. Raise the hands up, turn them to the right, so the fingers point to the right. Drag the arms across, turn the foot in the back, and grab the ball. Now, 
and let's take it up to there. I know that's a lot of little details, and then take it step by step. So feet together, hands on the side. So first thing, bend the knees. Now, the weight should be on the right leg so you can step out with the left. Draw the hands forward and rise up. Bend at the elbows, flex the wrists, drag down. Now you're going to turn to your right, raise the hands up, the fingers point to the right, drag across, turn the right foot to point that way, grab the ball, and switch to cat stance, which is essentially this position, but with the toe down. All right. So... With all of this, this is in place, so it's not that difficult. The rest of it, what's really moving is your body. So from here, I'm not moving my hands. Yes, my hands are moving, but not because of my arms, because of my torso. So my hands are here, they stay in this spot, and what moves is my torso. And the hands don't consciously move until I have to grab the ball and shift. Now, with the foot turning, you don't want to turn it all the way straight because then it makes this posture really awkward. So it points out like a 45-degree angle. So let's try it again from the top. Get together, hands on the side. And bend the knees. Shift to the other side, stepping out with the left leg, and come back to center. Now the weight should be evenly distributed. Draw the hands forward, rise up, bend the elbows, flex the wrists, and bring down. And turn. Raise the hands, turn the hands, now turning the waist to drag the hands across, turn the foot to that angle, grab the ball, and switch to cat stance. Good. Now we're going to do it one more time, just going over the movement, then after that we'll do it with the breath. Bend the knees, stepping out with the left, back to center. Rise up with the hands, sink the elbows, flex the wrists, bring it down. Turn, raise the hands, point them to the right. Turn the waist. Now shift the foot as you're about to complete it and grab the ball. Okay. Now, before we even get into the breathing, I should detail the general rule of thumb. So, for all of this, your pelvis is tucked in. Now, you don't want to do it too much to where you're leaning back, just enough to keep your spine in line. Naturally, we have an arc here. We want to try to eliminate that arc. Now, the head, the chin is tucked in, so it should, you should almost be able to have like a little tiny cup resting on your head for a majority of what we do. So that way, all of this, your spine should be almost like a rod in the ground, just completely straight and erect. Now, with regards to the feet, Almost never will we be standing straight. Throughout the duration of the class, throughout the warm-up, the knee rotations, the qigong, as opposed to standing straight, you want to keep your knees bent. And the same story with the, the torso. The butt tucked in, back straight, head up. 
Now, with the back straight, some people say, you know, you want to keep your chest up, and other people say you want to keep your chest sunk in. It, you have to find the middle ground, because if your chest is out, then this is contorted. If your chest is too much in, then this is too rounded. So you have to kind of find a middle ground that helps you to keep that alignment. I can't give a general rule of thumb because everybody's body is different. So you have to feel out like if you're the type of person that naturally walks with a sunken in chest, you want to puff out. If you naturally walk like this, you want to sink in. So you have to find your center. And I think that just about covers the foundation. You don't want to keep your arms tense either. The whole time, they say you should move as though you have eggshells underneath your armpits. That essentially saying to be gentle with your movement. You don't want to be tense at all. So let's try it now with that mindset and try to coordinate it with the breathing. You have the movements down, so let's add the breathing. So from here, as you bend down, breathe in. And as you step out, breathe out. As the hands come up, breathe in. Drop the elbows, flex the wrist, and breathe out. Now as you turn and raise the hands, breathe in. And breathe out as you drag them across. And as you grab the ball, breathe in. And I'll take you to the next movement. Step out, brush the horse's mane like we've done before, and breathe out. So that's, I think, a better stopping point. Again, feet together, hands on the side. So try. I know I've given you like a million points, and it's going to be hard to remember it all at the same time. That's fine. If you can remember a little bit today, and a little bit next class, a little bit from next class, that's how it works. I'll give you everything you need, but odds are, you're going to forget some of it. You're going to remember some of it. But the more that you can remember, the better. So that next class, you can add more and more to it. Try to keep the key points, the what you think is most important for your own development. All right. Breathing in. Stepping out. And breathing out. Breathing in as you raise the hands. And breathing out as you sit. Turn, raise, and breathe in. And then turn and breathe out. And grab the ball, breathe in. And brush the horse's mane, breathe out. All right, now they say the whole Tai Chi form should feel like one movement. So all together, it should all flow as one action. So this is also relative to your breath capacity too. For me, when I do it, I'm breathing in through all of that. And then I breathe out. So the way I break it down, it, minimi it maximizes the amount of times for you to breathe so that you can get acquainted with it. Once you've been acquainted to it, it becomes a lot easier and you can build on that. You might just breathe in the whole time. So here, and then breathe out. You have to feel out what works best for you. And the goal is to minimize the amount of times you have to breathe. But to start, if you have to breathe six, 12 times throughout this, do it and mitigate it as time goes by. Again. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. Out.
breathe in. Out. Breathe in. And out. Very good. Now I'm going to open the floor to you guys. Do you guys have any questions whatsoever? Give me a thumbs up if you're good. <laughs> All right. All right, cool. So that's class. If you don't have any questions and you